and welcome to Community Board 8 Speaks. My name is Dave Rosenstein. I'm a member of Community Board 8, and uh, I'll be your host for tonight's show. Uh, Community Board 8 Speaks is a monthly program about issues of interest to residents and businesses in the Community Board 8 area. That's 59th Street to 96th Street on the north, from Fifth Avenue to the East River, and Roosevelt Island. Community boards have 50 unsalaried members appointed by the borough president in consultation with local city council members. We're a part of city government under the New York City Charter. Uh, boards play an advisory role in zoning and land use issues and community planning and city budget process and coordination of municipal services. You can learn more about Community Board 8 and boards in general on our website, which is very simple. It's CB as in Community Board, the number 8, M for Manhattan cb8m.com. Our guest tonight is Jacqueline Ludorf, chairman of our community board. Jackie was reelected to a second one-year term, which begins this month. Jackie, welcome once again Thank you. to Thank you, David. Community Board Speaks. Uh, Jackie earned an MBA from NYU's Stern School of Business, was a banker with Citibank before her 21-year career with the Long Island Railroad. She was their manager of capital budgets until her retirement in 2007. Jackie is active in her east side parish, St. Joseph's of Yorkville, and in retirement earned a master's degree in parish ministry. She has served on Community Board 8 for 30 years, including three years each as first vice chair and second vice chair, as co-chair of the Street Life Committee and chair of the Environment and Sanitation Committee. Um, I want to ask you about your priorities for the new term, but first we've made reference to the Sanitation and Environment Committee. Um, you were involved in the proposed marine transfer station that's slated to be built next door to the Asphalt Green Recreation Center right. on the FDR Drive. Um, it's very controversial. What's the status of that project? Well, most of the lawsuits have been denied by the courts. The last one to be denied was one which said that, um, Col not Carl Schultz Park, but um, the park next to it, the that Asphalt, the, Green, Asphalt yeah. Green, the Asphalt Green was a park courts denied that they said it wasn't a park so it's going to be appealed and the other thing that's still pending is that uh, Michael Kellner the assemblyman from our district has legislation in Albany which says that you cannot have an, a marine transfer station within 800 feet of subsidized housing so we don't know if that will pass or not but you know there is the subsidized housing behind asphalt green so we'll see what happens but actually, you know, everything has gone according to plan because the original plan was to stall this thing, at least to Mayor Bloomberg is no longer mayor, which we thought would have been now. But of course, now that he has been reelected, I don't know how that's going to change things. But it's not in the budget till 2011. And I think it's going to be difficult with the construction of the 2nd Avenue subway to do anything with the marine transfer station. And then as time goes on, I just think the traffic on 86th Street is just not going to allow such a thing. So I hate to see them build it and then find out they can't use it, but we'll see. So that's really where it is mm, right The now. issues are both uh, air pollution as well as what's going to happen with all those garbage trucks lined up along whatever street they will be on, probably right. Rock Avenue. Well, they say they're not going to be lined up any longer. They're only going to be on the ramp going to the marine transfer stations, but we'll have to see. So hopefully it doesn't go through, but... The other uh, big project you made reference to was the Second Avenue subway. It's a, a huge capital project. Uh, it's very much needed, given the overcrowded Lexington Avenue subway. But it's hurting businesses. It's uh, having a serious impact on traffic. It's much delayed. Um, you have some experience with capital projects from the Long Island Railroad days. So mm -hmm. What's your thoughts about this whole? Well, uh, I I think it's going according uh, as any schedule of this magnitude would go. You know, there are things called um, unseen site conditions, and obviously when you're constructing an already built-up community, it's very difficult to anticipate all the things that can go wrong. I don't think anyone, everyone wanted it. I don't think anyone ever expected that it would affect houses the way it's affecting houses and people's residences, let alone the businesses. So. It's going to be a very difficult project to handle. I think it will be more delays and it will be more costly because, you know, each time you delay it costs more and each time you uh, change the contract and do a change order, it's more costly. So I really don't have a lot. I mean, I'm sure it'll be good in the end, but I think we're going to live through a lot of very difficult times 
until 2016 when the construction schedule is now anticipated to be complete. I live a block away from the, uh, the blasting and I feel the, the thump. Uh -huh. And they set off the charges. It's uh, right. It raises a little, a little anxiety. But so far, um, they've they've um, they've done what they said they're going to do. Yeah. No ceilings have collapsed. Uh, no buildings have collapsed. Um, you talked to our town newspaper about the the coming year, and one of the things that you mentioned was uh, budget cuts to the community mm -hmm. board. Yeah. So currently, there are proposed budget cuts. They were last year, but then they were restored. And there, there is some kind of difference of opinion. Some people feel that maybe community boards don't need all the money they need, they have, get. Maybe we should give it to social services instead. But I think most people, and certainly the borough president, is all for restoring community board budgets. Now, the 59 community boards each get $209,000 a year. It basically goes for staff salary. And then there are some um, other incidentals that it pays for, like mailing and stamps and things like that, but it's not really a whole lot of money. The budget has not increased in a number of years. It's been many years since there's an increase in the community board budgets. So my feeling is unless you're going to say, let's do away with the community boards, then you really can't cut their budgets because they're just really so close to the bone right now. And um, the mayor last year tried to cut them, OT OMB, I guess, tried to cut them from the city of New York, and the city council voted to restore them. So. We hope we continue to have allies in city council and that the budgets aren't cut this year. So it's possible that we might keep to the same budget next year, beginning it's, in July? It's possible. It depends how the current budget situation turns out. Mm. You never really know. But Education. It's a huge issue on the Upper East Side. Uh, what are the concerns? Well, the concerns are that there are not enough seats for all the students who want to go to school here. I think for so many years, um, you know, there weren't that many students, there weren't that many young people in New York. In the last 10, 15 years, we've seen, you know, little strollers and children all over the place. That didn't used to exist 30, 40 years ago. And then those children that were around all went to private schools. Now there are many people moving into the city who really want to go to the public school system. And there just aren't enough schools. And, you know, where are you going to build them? That's another problem. So this year, PS 151 was a school. You know, it's on First Avenue in the mm -hmm. 90s. Now that school was, I think, because of asbestos contamination, it was shut down. So this year, there are many kindergartners who didn't have a place to go. So finally, one of the Catholic parishes had a school that was closed. So they put them there. And next year, they'll have a first grade. But I think they're going to try to get a, another full-time school for these students. And there are other situations where the schools just don't exist. So kind of incomprehensible to me that you pay over a million dollars for your apartment, and then you have to scramble to find a place to send your children to public school. So it is a very big issue, and it's one that will be affecting us for several years to come. The borough president actually did a study, and he found out that one of the, he discovered that one of the reasons why perhaps the schools aren't adequate is that maybe the model wasn't right and that they didn't project correctly the number of students that would be in the school system. Our uh, education committee is very active in, in dealing with this, uh, this whole range of issues. Uh, listeners can look at our website, which again is cb8m as in manhattan.com. You'll see a calendar and you'll see which committees are meeting and what day if you click on that particular committee, it'll open up and give you the agenda and where it's meeting. So uh, if you're interested in educational issues, I urge you to uh, take a look and attend the uh, committee meetings. Street vendors, it's another hot issue. Yeah, we have a uh, special committee that was established in Community Board 8 to deal with the vendor situation. We had um, all the affected parties come together one night. And it was very interesting to hear what actually goes on with street vendors. Um, the police really have their hands tied in terms of being the only mm -hmm. law enforcement agency that can give fines to the vendors because every street has a different history to it. Every block has a different story. I had always thought that if you were a restricted street, you were a restricted street, but apparently that's not really the case. Because if you're a restricted street, veterans can still do vendoring. Veterans can still sell things on that street. So that's why it's very hard for the police to enforce the laws, because how do you know 
you know, if you had a restricted street and nobody could vendor on that street, that'd be one thing. But then when you have somebody there, that automatically invites other people to come. The other thing is, is that the police are the only people that can issue summonses and fines and confiscate their goods. So we have also asked that, you know, other police, like from the from uh, Consumer Affairs, be allowed to confiscate also the goods because the police, you know, there's really not enough of them. And obviously, you know, vendors is not their first priority. They do do a good job in monitoring it, but we really need other agencies to help and be uh, certified to deal with the vendors. Inspector Murtaugh of the 19th Precinct is asked at every community council meeting about it, and he says that the, the rules are so complicated. There's so many right. different agencies between Consumer Affairs, police, uh, for things like counterfeit. Mm -hmm. um, health, and then the special issues relating to uh, to veterans. That it's beyond the ability of the average uh, foot patrolman to know what right, they can enforce right. and what they can't. That was one of our resolutions to try to get the law so that they're consistent, block by block, so that the police really will know exactly what to expect on every block. Let's go back to. Uh, where we started your priorities for your uh, second term as a board chair. Uh, what are some of the tasks or challenges you'd like to address? Well, I think, you know, there are so many things going on now. We had really, some of us had thought that going into last year that with the budget problems that there wouldn't be a lot of things happening and yet they're just popping up all over the place. Um, you know, we our, our transportation committee has a big issue about bikes. We would like to see a dedicated bike lane. So we passed several resolutions about bikes. So it'd be good to, and we also have asked the Department of Transportation to do a study to see if we could have a dedicated bike lane in our neighborhood. So we really would like to push to make sure they start that study or at least give us an answer if they can do it or not. Again, schools are still a priority and our, our education committee will be working on making sure that we have enough seats for students in the 2010-2011 year. Um, I would also like to make sure that there's more follow-up on committees. Sometimes we vote on a resolution and then it kind of just goes somewhere and we never really know what happens to it. Mm. I would like to see that we follow up and that we get a notice to all board members and the public what happened to that resolution. Did it ever get settled? Is it still sitting somewhere or was there a resolution to it? Um, no, we will continue to have Street life issues, uh, noisy bars are an issue. Um, recently, um, we had a noisy bar on First Avenue in the block that I live in, but I live in the back, so I never heard it. And uh, one of the good things was that, and it's one of the reasons why community boards are good and effective, is that the people in the buildings said that they'd be willing to work with a bar owner, and the bar owner said he'd be willing to work with the people in the neighborhood. So it was kind of a good situation, and we would hope that all people would be like that, and mm -hmm. we'll see what happens. We ask that they come back in three months' time to see how things are going. So, um, you know, one of the things, being on the borough board, the borough board is where all 12 community boards and all 12 city council people get together to discuss issues once a month at the borough president's office. Uh, one of the things that I realize is that so many people have such big land issues like, you know, the West Side Overbuild, the Con Edison plant in Board 6. And we don't have anything like that, for the good or the bad, I'm not sure which, but, you know, we have a lot of um, quality of life issues, such as street vendors and uh, sidebar cafes and trying to keep our buildings the way they are so that... Um, we don't have these grandiose blocks of land to be developed, but we just have a lot of day-to-day -day quality of life issues that have to be taken care of. Bicycles on the sidewalk is another... Right, yes. Bicycles are a big thing. The, the public knows those who come to meetings uh, see you presiding over the monthly full board meeting, which, again, for listeners, is the third Wednesday of the month, and if you look at the website, uh, it'll tell you what the location of the uh, uh, the full board meeting is. And most months we have a land use committee meeting the second Wednesday of the month. But um, I know how much extra time uh, being chair of this committee involves, but the listeners may not know. 
uh, what are some of the things that you have to uh, have to do to keep the board operating and operating properly? Well, yeah, I, I try to go to as many meetings as I can. I usually start off making the first one of the month, and then other things get in my way, and I don't go much further than that. But I try to go to you know parks committee, transportation, land use. Um, and then I have to run in the um, full board in the land use meeting. So I like to be aware of what's on the agenda so that, you know, I don't stumble through it. Um, and then also, you know, I have to make sure that the office is doing okay. We're very lucky in having Latha Thompson be our district manager. She has a very good staff, but still you have to go there and make sure that things are going okay and that, you know, they do the things that have to be done. Um, so that takes a lot of time. And then emails. Emails are something that really floored me when I first became chair. They've gotten to be a lot, little better, but I think when I, I, some days I can get 30, 40 emails and reading them all and trying to go through them all and decide which ones you have to act on and which ones are just information only and which ones you can just delete are kind of take up a lot of time. Sometimes I'm glad that I get a Godiva one so I can just delete <laughs> it without even thinking about it. Do you have a role in, in uh, each committee produces minutes, and those minutes are distributed at the full board meeting, sometimes for information, sometimes because we have to vote on right. resolutions. Do you have to review those minutes before they go into the... Uh... Yeah, I do. Uh, I, I look at them uh, not too carefully because I figure that the person, especially if I wasn't at the meeting, if I wasn't at the meeting, I'm not really sure, you know, what happened. So, but I uh, usually do review them before they go in the final package. And then the, the, the borough board is a, a group of community board chairs? And also the uh, city council people for each district. And this is a, a monthly meeting? Right, monthly meeting. So there'd be like 24 of us. So for a quorum, you'd have to have 13 people. They do have to have a quorum. They bring up a lot of ideas and things that we vote on as a community board, like um, there are such issues as um, Dan Gorodnik, our, one of our city council members brought up a bill in which we would try to um, stop. If construction stopped, then we would have them register with the city so that when they, when they had the funds to start construction again, they wouldn't have to start from the beginning. And at the same time, we would be able to monitor their safety. So we would know they're not working, and we would expect them to do some things to keep their site, site safe. So um, that was something that I probably wouldn't have heard of if I hadn't been at the borough board meeting. Um, and there are various other issues that the borough president puts forward. He gives us a presentation, then we take them back to the community boards, and then we vote on them a couple of months after that. Are they open to the public? I've never been to a no, borough board no, meeting. No, no, I don't think so. And then the, the district manager, Latha Thompson, in our case, also attends another meeting, the this borough cabinet? Borough cabinet meeting, yes. That's where, you know, the police, the fire department, other agencies come and they discuss issues. They would tell Latha what they're doing and she would tell them what the problems are that she has, that, you know, what problems people have called in and complained about, so. And then she fills you in on, on those issues that... Yeah, yeah, uh huh, yeah. yeah. We work very closely together. What's been most satisfying of your... Um... Well, I guess accomplishing something, just getting things done. Um, I think that, you know, the community board usually does have a resolution on almost every issue. It's not kind of like takes us months and months like Congress to get anything done. We kind of, if we have an agenda item and it has a deadline, we usually meet that deadline. We could vote for it or against it, but we usually finish things. We usually get things, close the book on almost all issues. Um, as I said, it was very good to know that we were part of finding a school for PS 151. I know I was at the opening of a park in our neighborhood, and all of a sudden came the children, the kindergartners from PS 151. I thought, wow, here they are in real life. So it was such a good thing to really see an issue that had been before the board actually come to fruition. And here the children were who were going to that school. So Which was park very... was that? The little one on uh, York Avenue? Yeah, Jehovah's Park. Yes, uh huh, yeah. Right next to Asphalt Green. Yeah, it's a nice little park. It really did a great job. The city parks department did a great job of it. Yeah, they listened to the community, and it, it's just charming. It's really a charming little place. For listeners, that's on uh, York Avenue between 91st and 92nd, I think. Yeah, I, around uh, there. Yeah, it's on the east side of uh, of York Avenue, and it's 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 a park that's got a lot of 
uh, resources for, for young kids. Mm -hmm. um, what's been the most frustrating or, or disappointing? I think the most frustrating is just personalities. You have 50 personalities and you have nothing over them. It's not like, you know, when I was working and you had, you could give them performance reviews or you know, their race depended upon you or even their job, mm -hmm. even staying in their job. It's kind of hard to manage all 50 people and their personalities and their dislikes and likes and sometimes even the way they treat each other. I know one time, um, one of the first meetings I ran after I had interviewed with a local newspaper, this woman from the newspaper called me up and she said, oh, I was so upset last night. I said, why? She said, well, I think you were just so terribly mistreated. And I said, oh, well, I didn't think so. She said, must be really terrible to get so used to that kind of treatment. <laughs> and uh, I mean, that that's really okay. But sometimes it can be a little bit overwhelming, the personalities involved and the things we do to each other. But that's probably the most difficult part. You'd like everyone to be good friends and but we do work well together and we get things done, so I guess that's what's really important. What came to mind when I asked you that question was, some people get angry at us for not doing what they want, and mm -hmm. others get angry at us because we only have an advisory role. Right. So the, the lack of understanding on the part of the public mm -hmm. about what a community board's role is and what our powers are, what our limitations are, um, can be frustrating at times. And I guess you have to take yeah, it more than yeah. we do. Well, as I think I, I think a good case of that was the dog run in the park mm -hmm. in the '60s, where so many people hated it, hated it, and thought we were responsible for it and we could do something about it. I think what we could really do is get the parks department to come to a meeting and to hear the complaints. Uh, at the same time, there were people who loved it and thought the people who hated it were crazy. So, yeah, it's very difficult when you have that kind of situation. The same thing happens a lot of time in transportation issues. You have somebody who wants to change the street sign to say this or that, and you do it, and the next month all these other people come in like, why did you do that? We never wanted this done. So it's really hard to please everyone. You try to use your past experiences to come up with the best decision, but that doesn't always, always happen. Some, you're gonna, somebody is not going to like what you did, I think, in almost all cases. I was at that dog run meeting, the first one, and then the small dog owners came back to us and said, well, we weren't represented. They, uh -huh. they could have been. So we had another right, meeting, right. and we modified the plans to suit the concerns of the small dog owners. Mm -hmm. It was quite a... Um, just taking a step back and looking at community boards as part of city government, um, you've had a lot of experience over 30 years. Uh, what aspects of the community board as a part of city government do you think is effective, and, and where do you think changes for the better might be made? Well, I think, as I said, I think sometimes we're the first level of bringing the community, like a developer together, or the community and an agency together to discuss issues. Sometimes, like I think most recently at a parks issue, the parks department wanted to take a park that had been a baseball playing field, like a little league field, and, and dedicate it to tennis only. And because we had this community board meeting, the parks commissioner was able to see how much people were against that situation, so they decided to change their plans and have the baseball field stay. So I think that that's the kind of thing that without the community boards, it would be very difficult to get that kind of input from the community, because that's really our role, to be a mediator between the community and the agencies, the community and developers. And um, I really think that, you know, it's kind of such an important thing and one of the basic things that we do. Um, one of the things that I find that we're lacking in, it's just, and it's changed from when I first got on the board. So when I first got on the board, there were a lot, a lot of social workers, a lot of people involved in, mm -hmm. you know, um, issues of the homeless, issues of the poor, issues of health. And now we seem to have very little interest in the board on those issues. You know, there's just two or three people involved, so. It's one of the things I asked the borough president to see if they can't find some more people who are social workers. It's all we have is lawyers and government people these days. So, not there's anything wrong with them, but you know, it's something that changed because we used to have. Also, when I first got on the board, I guess we had many more issues with development. 
When I first got on the board, we used to have meetings till 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning every time we met because we would have two or three ULIP applications, big, huge buildings with a lot of amenities to consider, a lot of uh, changes to consider. So um, I'm really very happy that we don't have any of those any longer. For listeners who uh, aren't familiar with the city process, uh, ULERP refers to a uniform land use review procedure. It's a, right. it's a uh, step-by-step process that certain, anything involving zoning change and a variety of other major uh, developments have to go through appearance before the community board, city planning commission, uh, perhaps the city council, perhaps the mm -hmm. uh, landmarks commission. We call that ULERP, U-L-U-R-P. <laughs> and those are, are uh, something that the community board must uh, listen to. Right. Well, again, our, our role is advisory. Thank you so much, Jackie, for, well, thank you, David. for joining us. Enjoyed thank you for, for joining us. Good night.